Hi, it's Malcolm from Aquaspray. If you ever get a problem with a Kranzel M2000 trigger, uh, this is how to fix it. I was going to uh, use a brand new trigger um, just to show you, but a customer has brought in an old one. So you are going to be looking at something that's had a little bit of wear on it. Um, let's get started. Obviously, screwdriver, I'll try and make it as less boring as possible. But just unscrew all the screws from the housing. So now that's done, you're going to have to just take this out and you'll need to lift it from one corner so that it's under this lip you see. So once you get that out, make sure you get all the screws, make sure all the screws are together and you know where they are. And then you can do the same with this by peeling it out of the housing and then you're left with the main housing. So the first thing you want to do is take these a little lock nuts off uh, they are seven mil um, I have actually ground I hand ground one of these down because it was too thick um, to get the spanner on just loosen it off a little bit and I'll try and keep everything as well in order of how it came off so you've got two lock nuts and the washer and then you've got a pin that is holding this trigger in place now if you don't have anything to push that pin out what you can do is use a screw see the pin coming out of the edge here once you've got enough bite on it you can literally just lever it up slowly and surely with long nose with uh, some side cutters just to pull it out enough uh, you can get rid of the screw now as well and just you want to just pull it up enough just to get the trigger off and then leave it in the housing so you don't lose it that's how the trigger is and then you can get rid of the rest of the mechanism so hold the spanner over where the two little brass lugs are and um, we'll probably end up taking the front off really first so a 24 mil spanner and a 14 mil allen key and then if you put a little bit of pressure on you will unscrew that so that's a quick release um, front on it it's identical to the uh, screw coupling one this one has a smaller allen key in the front uh, you can take that off and literally that would just bolt straight in there and convert it to a quick release if you wanted to so it's exactly the same gun so now we have three different sections we have this section here this section here and the main body housing with old pin mechanism in so again with a 24 mil spanner probably better off with the 24 mil on that side and the ring spanner so it doesn't slip then just put a bit of pressure on so you get it moving sometimes these are loctited in place and they are murdered to get out but other times it will just come off and it will just need unscrewing all the way to the end of the thread and again if you're using your ring spanner you're not going to slip and whack your knuckles or break the brass so slowly and surely it's probably better 
this one has been loctited, so it is tight. All the way as well. It doesn't really need to be loctited because it's sealed on an O-ring. Uh, but from the factory they like to use Loctite on everything just to make sure it doesn't leak. All nice and loose now, so unscrew that all the way. Make sure you don't bend it on the way out because insert there is the pin. So that's your valve, uh, that's part of the valve. Uh, there is a seal behind here, I'll show you that in a sec. And this O-ring here, if this O-ring's burst, it will leak out of this hole. So it's uh, quite simple. So we'll put that across there. And again with a 24 mil spanner. Unscrew the other side. And again, that's tight as well. I'm not using the ring on this one. Uh, probably is better if you use the ring spanner. Uh, certainly, we need to start getting it uh, loose like that. Uh, but because this is so narrow for the spanner, you know, it's not going to hurt too much. But once it's loose, it's loose. You can see the amount of Loctite that they put on there. And again, don't bend this pin because that's what's sealing it. So, so far we have that, that, and then we need to take the pin out, which you can just push it onto the back end, draw it out, try not to bend it. So there's absolutely nothing in this housing now at all. This is the pin from it. So I have to try and put it in order. You have a, a power back, so a flat washer, with a groove in where the o-ring sits into it and the little green o-ring so i will strip it completely down so we've got it just be tight on the threads this one actually uh if this o-ring's worn it will probably leak out of the back where the pin comes out and they'll be dripping from here uh, this one isn't but move that across so we have a washer to help support the spring. You've got to make sure that that spring is not bent or cracked or broken or anything. And then your pin, you've got to make sure that this is not bent because it's very, very thin here. If you try and, I'm sure I could probably bend it with my fingers, but all this needs just cleaning up. in its place there's nothing in here this is where it seals onto there and that all in there so if there's any real damage on there you might need to um, replace this valve kit uh, there is an o-ring here behind all the loctite so it shouldn't leak from there but the o-ring um, if it leaks from between the housing here It'll be because of that o-ring it comes as a new kit the only other thing is there's a seal on here so this o-ring needs to be okay and there's also another exact same one as these little green and white one behind here so i'll just get my allen key key fits in there uh, sometimes it's not very tight because it doesn't need to be tight this one just needs to be held in place when you get a kit there are two different lengths of this grub screw um, this is the short one I think uh, I'll tell you in a sec when I get this out but if you use the thread end you should be able to just peel these out And again, if these are leaking, 
uh, the water will come in through the gun and it won't shut off. And again, it's a par back where you've got a grooved and a flat end. The groove fits in first. So let's put it back in how it's supposed to be. Um, the one that is slightly longer than this, which is probably the older version, doesn't have this uh, little power back flat washer. So it goes flat washer in there, round washer, the grub screw, and then the quick release on there and the front, or the M22 if that's what you've got. So things to service on it. What you need to do is make sure that the o-ring on here is not broken or damaged in any way which is pretty good there's nothing else in this brass housing it has holes in it you're going to make sure that the holes are clear you should be able to see through them which is fine So make sure that o-ring sits in that groove okay. These holes are okay. Can get a little pin just to double check that it's going all the way through. Once you've got that through, you will need to place this power back inside this housing. And the last thing you want to do is drop it and it turn over because you need the groove on the o-ring. So sometimes it's better to just line it up like so and sometimes you just push it in like so a very noisy mobile phone in the car hands free kit so once that o-ring's in place and it's sat on top of that flat washer and then just screw the grub screw in uh, there is a flat end where the threads are that is the bit that goes down so the top of the threads are at the top screw that on and again it doesn't need to be tight so I'll just hand tight and just done no problem uh, a lot of lock tight there I'm going to make sure that this housing is nice and clear there's no damage on there no damage on this o-ring so we can start putting that back together and this has to be clean if this has got all damages on there uh, it's not going to seal properly so we put this back in there first uh, so the spring on there the support for the spring the green o-ring just push it all the way to the end and the power back with the groove facing the o-ring uh, is very important and uh, I'll keep badgering on but that is that assembly done A tiny little bit of grease on there grease the o-ring and the, the piston itself and then push it into that housing and again you don't want to be bending this don't want to bend this at all so with that said we can put that back on and screw that in Screw it up tight and then you just a little nip. It doesn't need to be really tight if it if you if it leaks or whatever, you're just gonna need to replace the o-ring. So that's the valve done. The o-ring's back in there. You can put a little bit of grease on that o-ring just to make it slide into the housing a bit better. Uh, you can grease the end of the green o-ring in there as well. So Again, you've got to make sure that the pin starts in that hole. If it's slightly bent and then you try and force it, it'll bend it and it'll never seal. So you should just be able to feel it through the o-ring. And then just tighten it up by hand at first. And so it's all the way in. to the end bit of a spanner and then just quicken it it doesn't have to be really tight don't over tighten things 
The only other thing that's serviceable on this is this bit. It has a 14mm Allen key and in the back end there it does have a socket for a 22mm. So if you unscrew that, if it's leaking from where the connection to the lance is, you can unscrew this bit and there will be an o-ring in here quite a heavy o-ring this one looks really nice there's nothing else in there there's nothing else in here if if any of the ball bearings are missing or broken just get the whole thing it's not worth messing around you can't buy the the ball bearings unless you go to a specialist bearing place and then it'll probably cost you even more money to be fair so just just buy the whole kit which you can buy one of these for about 25 quid so that said uh once you've done that and you either need to replace that o-ring or i mean this one's good it's nothing wrong with this one it just needs a little bit of tender care so a little bit of grease on there so that this lance spigot fits in and seals up nicely don't overpack it and then you just screw that back on so socket inside screw it up you want to hold it with that allen key and then a quick nip it doesn't have to be really tight it just needs to be on once you've done that it's probably advisable to put a little dab of Loctite on these threads. Um, usually, when you take the Allen key off, it will leave this part of the housing inside there already. Um, but the Loctite on this got broken off, so when it comes off, it comes off. But if this is Loctited, you'll be able to change the O-ring without stripping anything down. Just the Allen key off, pop the O-ring out, put the O-ring back in and screw it back. So once that's on, I haven't got any Loctite, but just dab a Loctite on them threads and then again, tighten it up. So that should be pretty much perfect now. I'd be really happy with that one. You need to put the trigger on, find the hole. Which I didn't. Tight coming out. Sometimes they're, they're easy enough to just press in with your thumb, but this one for some reason is tight in that housing. But that's that. So that's the trigger, it's all nice and loose. We're going to need to put the washer on. I'm going to screw both of these up to the washer. Now, you don't want this really, really tight. You want it just so it just barely touching, a tiny little bit of movement. Nothing else, nothing more, just a tiny bit of movement that's free. And then you can lock it up. So, one spanner on. And then the other spanner just to lock that. And then just double check it again. That's just about perfect. So when you pull the trigger and it shuts, if it's too tight, it will open it because it will pull that pin away from the seal and it'll do it. So but yeah, that's that's almost perfect that. That'll do me. So again you want to slide that under and then locate these two pins in the actual housing. There'll be two pins here. Locate them again. Make sure the trigger works and it feels nice and it's returning nice. And that is it, just screw it back up.
notice, but I always go evenly across it, almost like a, a tightening a car tire just to make sure that the plastic's not caught on any corner. And if you do opposite corners, all the holes will wind up properly anyway. So that's it, I'll be happy with that. That's gonna be good for another year of service. Um, if you break anything inside or if there's anything that's broken inside, you can always repair it. The actual, uh, the repair kit for that um, valve kit is available. The end is available. The housings, if they're broken, the clamshells are available. So this gun is one of the most repairable and reliable guns on the market. Um, I really, I, I like them, I recommend them and they're good. So I hope you like the video, um, give us a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, uh, comment if you want to see anything else about this gun.